Hello, everybody. This is Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, and I'm here with a weekly evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 13th and the 20th of January 2018. And I'm very proud to have a very special guest with us this week, Gali Satpuran Livne. Gali and me know each other for many years because we're both longtime students with Maurice Fernandez. Over the years, Gali has become a, a, a student and then a teacher of Kundalini Yoga. She's an expert with eclipses, and she's a VP of ESAR, the International Association for Astrological Research. She's the representative of ESAR here in Israel. And as I said, I'm very proud to have you on board for this week's message. Gali, how are you? I'm good, Boaz. Thank you for inviting me. It's my pleasure and honor. So, Gali, if um, you want to tell us a little bit about your uh, yogi name, Satpuran, and what it means, and sure um yeah a lot of people don't don't really understand uh, what what is this name in the middle of my <laughs> name so satpuran means the complete and perfect truth and this is kind of my uh, intention to my spiritual uh, development in this mm. life you can Beautiful. say that Beautiful. this is the meaning of a spiritual name and everybody can get a spiritual name when you're a student of yoga, then at one point, that's part of the initiation, that you get a yogi name, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but you need to ask for it. You don't mm. just get it. I mean, mm. it's, you need to somehow initiate yourself, have the intention to, to have this name. Beautiful. Not everybody has a spiritual name. Okay, great. So, Gali, if we turn into the astrology of this week... Uh, we begin this week with the uh, conjunction. Uh, we don't even begin with it. It's on, it's on a Saturday, on the 13th. There's an exact conjunction between Mercury and Saturn. And this is something we've been feeling over the last few weeks and we'll still be feeling uh, this week and the next. What can you say about that? Yeah, so uh, Mercury is uh, leaving uh, Sagittarius, where he says whatever he wants uh, and doesn't uh, <laughs> take responsibility for anything. He just speaks. Um, oh, me. out. And when he meets um, uh, Saturn in uh, Capricorn, you know, um, life is uh, getting uh, more serious and we are... We need to take more responsibility for what we say, how, you, how we communicate. Uh, we're becoming more conscious of it, and maybe we can feel a little bit limited with, in our communication with other people on the one hand. But on the other hand, you know, it's, it's focusing us and directing us to say, um, to take responsibility on our, our words, because they have a lot of power, the words, and we need to know... <clears throat> how to navigate uh, the, um, the words in a way that will be, um, that, that will bring more uh, responsibility. Um, we can, um, you know, in, uh, in the yogic uh, tradition, the Kundalini yoga tradition, we're talking about uh, ten, um, 10 bodies. Mm -hmm. One, the second body is the negative mind. There's mm -hmm. a positive a neutral mind as well. <coughs> so the negative mind is the one that is reactive and protective and see the danger and helps us survive. Avoid it. Yeah. Yeah, wants wants to protect and you know, so it, it sets the limits. Uh, where the where the positive mind wants to it's more Jupiter, it wants to move on and to mm -hmm. explore life and to, to take And risks. the negative mind is more Saturn. Exactly. So and we need to be more aware of, of um, the balancing, balancing of the negative mind mm -hmm. and not really um, go too much into negative thoughts, which can be also an, an effect of it, you know? Of a Mercury-Saturn conjunction, definitely. Yeah, not bring ourselves down too much and um, try to be aware of, uh, you know, not judging ourselves and not criticizing ourselves too much because this can be a side effect of um, Mercury, Saturn, Mercury Saturn. Exactly. and especially on the 13th because the moon is also square Neptune it's a time that we're more sensitive than usual we can get more easily hurt 
Um, so yes, all you said is very relevant and very true. I, I see it the same way. I see Mercury as the great navigator. We have to remember that Mercury doesn't only rule Gemini, it rules also Virgo. And when this mercury Saturn conjunction happens, it is a time that we can feel heavier. It is a time that we can feel like we're stopped in our places, like our navigation slows down through life. Like our words are very important, like everything, every little thing and we say or do is harshly judged by the environment or even by ourselves. And there's a need to ripen, there's a need to make sure that whatever we say or whatever we do, how we navigate our life forward, stands up to par and is um, sustainable and efficient on the grounds of reality that it can be trusted, that this is how it should be done. And if it's not mature enough, it's, if it's not ripened enough, then the judgment is harsh. And when we look together, Gali, on this uh, uh, week's charts, we saw this great stadium in Capricorn really pronouncing more clearly that heavy feeling and that need to take on responsibility, to adhere to the rules, to find the freedom uh, in our lives, within our own rules, and to grow up, to grow up and mature. And as we go towards the end of this week, and we're going to talk it a little bit <clears throat> later in the video, we're moving into a more Uranian, Aquarian energy of change. We can already see that on the 13th, Venus will be squaring around us exactly. This is something that we've been feeling in the last weeks, and we'll be feeling all through the week as well. Venus is about relationships. Venus is about our satisfaction and the way we treat ourselves and our bodies. And again, it squares around us. So challenging changes and need to think outside the box and, and transmute and adapt. And Uranus is not only about change, it's about upgrade. <clears throat> what can you say about this Venus square Uranus? <clears throat> Yeah, it brings a lot of, um, you know, restless. Because, restlessness, yes, definitely. Yeah, restlessness. We, because we, we want to, to change the old uh, ways of relating. Hmm. Venus in, in Capricorn is more, is bringing more like the traditional way of relating. And maybe Uranus in, in Aries wants to take her uh, away from the traditional, from the expected, from the, you know, um, the social um, norms and dogmas, and, yeah, and conditioning, yeah. It's um, you know, he, he's uh, Uranus is challenging Venus, and he tells her check your um, check the boundaries, check uh, where you are, um, you need to make a progress and move on and look for uh, new ways to uh, relate to others. Definitely. And, and listen to Gali's words. The new ways is a Uranian word, an Aquarian word, and relate is a Venusian word. And Gali, the next day on the 14th, because the sun is conjunct Venus, Venus is going to be squaring Uranus as well. So we're going to have a spillover, not only from relating to other people or even relating to ourselves, but who we are, what we bring into this world, the signature that we leave after we're gone, what we do, the light that emits from ourselves onto the world is up to change and upgrade as well. And we have on the 14th, the moon conjunct that Saturn Mercury. So everything that Gali said and I said about the Saturn Mercury is going to be even more felt on the 14th with the moon joining that. Gali, we have on the 15th the exact sextile between Jupiter and Pluto. Another aspect that we've been feeling through the last weeks and we'll be feeling all through this week. What can you say about that Jupiter and Scorpio sextiles Pluto? Well, um, this, is, um, this is another small but important phase of the Jupiter-Pluto cycle, uh, which is uh, coming to an end. Um, it's a closing um, sex sextile, and um, uh, Pluto, being the the new, the modern ruler of um, Scorpio, is actually emphasizing Jupiter and, and Scorpio. They are emphasizing each other, 
Um, and you know, it brings us um, the need to want uh, more out of this life, to know more about this life and to find the truth, no matter what, we're going there, we don't care about taboos, we don't care about, you know, old systems, we don't care about anything else. We just want to know the truth. We want to uh, really understand what is uh, everything that, that lies beneath, beneath the, the surface. The surface, definitely. Yeah, and it's, it's about not compromising about the truth, mm. you know? Mm. And also talk about the ways that we do it because, you know, you can go and have like your shamanic uh, experience, uh, uh, like the, this uh, ceremony that you're burying yourself. Um, in the ground. Yeah, in the ground and uh, you stay there for the whole night. And then you come out the next day, a new person. Yeah, trans- born again. Yeah, a born again. So um, this is... Um, this is the main uh, thing I think I see with um, Jupiter and, and uh, Pluto, mm-hmm. um, but it's also, you know, <coughs> politically, it's, uh, we, we can see the, that in this uh, cycle, Donald Trump was elected when Jupiter was square Pluto. Mm-hmm. So we can, uh, we can see maybe things that are uh, around this uh, issue, tycoons, people with a lot of money, with a lot of power, you know, they want more. Um, so, you, you know, we can see this, I mean, for example, in Israel, we have this mini scandal with the, with the sons of tycoons now, but um, yeah. um, we, we can see it and together with all the Capricorn, the strong oh, definitely. Capricorn definitely. The sky chart this week, it's about, you know, getting more power and how we manage our power. And how we manage our power is a very yeah. important thing, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so on the one hand, there's all this Capricorn in the sky asking us to do things right, doing the things how they should be done and, and stand up uh, to our responsibilities and grow up and mature. And on the other hand, we have this Jupiter sextile Pluto, which is not as harsh as the Jupiter square Pluto we had back in November when, when, when uh, Donald Trump was elected, which is a lot about power trips. And, and, and it's, it, it's a little harsher than that sextile, which is maybe a little bit more Venusian in its energies or popular or um, has some kind of, of community effort with it. Uh, I always see that sextile aspect as a social aspect. And Jupiter sextile in Pluto uh, really is about the uncovering of the darkness and by that uncovering and, and uh, exposure to the light, really growing up and expanding our horizons and our wisdom. And we can see the communal effort, the communal effort. And again, I want to go back to the, um, to the speech done at the, Globe, uh, at the Golden uh, Palm Award, I think, by Oprah Winfrey. Golden Globes. Golden, Golden Globe. Yeah, thank you for that correction. And we can see people working together to change and expand our horizons, to work within the shadows and expose them to the light. And of course, on a personal level, as Rick Levine said, Jupiter in Scorpio is a shadow dance. It's our own dance with our own shadows, and it's a time for transformation and clearing and and the death of the old and the birth of the new. And when that Jupiter sextile Pluto heightens it, then it's definitely a time that new truths can be uncovered and brought into the light. And we have to watch our sexuality. We have to watch uh, not being uh, too total or, uh, or too intense with that Jupiter sextile Pluto as well. And that brings me to the 16th. 16th is a strong day. We have a new moon in Capricorn. And that new moon is going to be sort of conjunct Pluto and really conjunct Venus squaring Uranus again, and Ceres is going to be, on the other hand, retrograding on the North Node. What can you say about the 16th, that new moon, Gali? Well, I think this new moon is the um, highlight of the week, really, because it's emphasizing the the huge stellium we have in Capricorn, with uh, Saturn in Capricorn being the last depositor of the chart. Very strong. Of them all, you know, yeah, 
and he rules them all. <laughs> One Saturn to rule them all. <laughs> and yes, the exactly. darkness bind them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, you know, is uh, things are getting uh, more uh, serious and Capricorn wants to to focus on how he builds and how he grounds and how he is um, connecting to life on earth, really. And um, setting the right boundaries and doing the right thing. And because this new moon is actually, you know, squared by Uranus, mm -hmm. it, um, it's giving an, a different a flavor to the Capricornian issues mm -hmm. because Uranus says, you need to check your uh, boundaries and you need to check your uh, whole system and your uh, social conditionings and everything that you, um, all kind of set of, of laws and... Everything you thought was established and, and safe. Yeah, everything, exactly. Nothing is safe anymore. And we know that already with Pluto and Capricorn, that will be um, uh, transiting Capricorn until 2024. Right. But still, it's, it's more emphasized now, this need to check again the old system, the old rules, and, you know, come up with new ways of doing things. Maybe it's not, it's not about um, the old ways anymore, especially the things that don't function, because sometimes we do have, you know, good layers. Um, exactly. not Good, um, uh, good foundations. Good foundations. Thank you. Yes. Um, good foundations that we can build on to mm -hmm. continue, continue building on and continue relying on. But um, I think what a lot of people are discovering right now is that a lot of these foundations are not working. Yes. And we, we will see them more with, when Pluto will move to Aquarius, of course, and in 2020, that's Saturn Pluto conjunction. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot to expect. We are, we are talking now about only one week, but yes. uh, or one, one, one month, of course, with because um, the new moon is giving the, yes. the, the tone for the next the lunar cycle. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the feeling is that, that something needs to be changed and we need to see what needs to be changed. It's not just governments, you know, it's definitely. Beginning with our own selves, with our own lives. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Gali. So yes, I again I agree with everything you said. Well, that's not such a big wonder. We studied, but <laughs> with the same teacher, so <laughs> so I do agree. And well, I I saw this uh, this chart, you know, and I saw the Moon conjunct Pluto. And if we take like lunar words like home, and if we take like Plutonian words like change, then we can say that home is changing. And that square to Uranus means that this change is upon us, whether we like it or not, and that we need to adapt. We need to change our ways as well. We have Ceres on the North Node. Ceres is the Great Mother. Ceres is Mother Earth. And it connects a lot to, to subjects that are dealing with Earth and, 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 uh, and Gaia. And it's a, a lot about what we give and what we receive, both on a personal and a collective level. And when she's retrograding on the North Node, then these subjects come up in our lives. <clears throat> so our home is changing. Nature is calling us to adapt, to change. We have extreme high temperatures in Australia, extreme low record-breaking temperatures in the Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, extremely hot breaking, uh, record breaking temperatures. And we know that global warming is here, whether we like it or not, and that this earth is trying to balance itself out, it needs our help. And that's also the conjunction to Venus. Venus is about the plane of earth and how we connect. Remember, Venus is the ruling planet of Taurus, everybody. And the way we connect to matter in general, to our own bodies on a personal level and everything that we have, but also to the world and earth in general. So it's time to grow up and mature and do things as they should be done, even if that means a great change regarding how we relate to earth. Um, 
That brings me to the 17th, when that same Venus is going to enter the sign of Aquarius. Gali? <clears throat> yeah, Venus is, uh, we have a play, a really interesting play with uh, Capricorn and Aquarius as archetypes this, um, this week. Sorry, yeah. Um, and uh, Venus in, uh, in Aquarius is a uh, more social, um, um, more social Venus. Mm -hmm. She wants to relate to interesting people and she wants to have more intellectual friends and a lot of stimulation. Um, she might though feel a little bit, you know, um, uh, not, not belonging to, to, the, to the old friends uh, and to the old group and to the old community. And mm -hmm. she wants to look for her community the the place where she relates to other people um in that a more think the same way yeah in a in a more progressive <laughs> way and um you know it's it's again it's um it's the same as uh, very similar it's not a, exactly the same but it's very similar to venus uh, square uranus mm -hmm. except no. that uranus was challenging venus but yes yeah so so she wants she wants to, um, to look for a new new ways new of relating connection, interesting connection yeah. great so yes yeah. definitely agree with you look when Venus is in Aquarius everybody this is not the greatest time for long-term relationships uh, because we have a greater need for intellectual stimulation we need people to ideologically stimulate us and interest us many times we find that we're in need of a change that people we are with in a relationship, whether it be a, a personal a intimate relationship or a business relationship or just friendship, it needs change. And we can become rebellious during that time. We have to be careful not to throw away the baby with the bathwater and not to rebel for the sake of rebellion, but just make the changes that need to be changed. Whenever I see a client with Venus in Aquarius or Uranus in the seventh house, I always tell them that it's not necessarily that they're not going to have long-term relationship or that they're going to have a hard time with long-term relationship. It's just they, they, they do need to understand that their relationships don't have to adhere to any social uh, uh, consensus. It needs to be authentic to them and it needs to be unique to them. And many times these people will find very respectable long-term relationships but are, that are a bit on the fringe or, or, or the avant-garde of mainstream society and maybe adapt some different norms regarding their, uh, uh, <clears throat> their relationship. So again, we have this changing energy, heightening the need to think outside the box, the need to, um, to do those changes with Venus entering Aquarius on the 17th. And on the 19th, the, th the sun is joining Venus in Aquarius bring more of that energy. Gali, you have anything to say about that? Yeah, it's more of the Aquarian, uh, Aquarian energy. And we are, it's actually, um, you know, the shift from the Capricorn um, to the Aquarius mm -hmm. um, is, is very interesting. Saturn is, is the old ruler of Aquarius. Both. Yes. So he's, he's ruling, he's, he still stays the ruler, he's still there, he's giving the, you know, the bottom line for everything Saturn yeah. in Capricorn. But you know, all this um, uh, strong Uranus uh, this week and uh, the Aquarius energy and the Capricornian energy, everything is um, connected um, to our uh, nervous system. We also... Okay. Um, aspect of Mars, Quincunx, uh, Uranus. So, you know, our nev nervous system is really challenged and we feel very irritated and very, uh, a lot of restlessness um, because, you know, we are looking for, for something. We want to go out of the box and we want to, to explore and discover and get new ideas. Um, and, but at the same time, we can, we can feel a lot of pressure and a lot of stress because Capricorn is also a lot of times demand, very demanding, is a mm. very demanding archetype. Mm. You know, you have to do your duty. You have yes. to do the right thing. 
So the whole week, uh, the Aquarian, the move of the Sun and Venus to Aquarius is, can, can uh, ease that a little yes. bit. Yes, can lift but, things up a little bit and bring a little bit of excitement. Yeah, but still, you know, you need to remember to get uh, your uh, enough uh, sleeping hours and to breathe and to reduce the stress. You know, the, the breathing techniques of the yogis are, can be life-changing. And if we remember just to be aware of the breath and to um, just to be, um, you know, conscious about the fact that we are breathing because a lot of people are breathing like, this way, uh, in front of their screens, the computers, and just forget themselves. They close the heart center completely, and they stop breathing. Here, I'm breathing now that you're talking about it. I start breathing deeply. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, you need to remember to breathe and, <coughs> and, yeah. and uh, do things that support the nervous system um, and to release this, this um, stress that can uh, come up. Definitely. Thank you for that. And, and I just want to mention on that point that Gali is a teacher of Kundalini Yoga and she gives out classes and she, she, has, a, 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 she, she has students and you can always contact her for that and we'll be giving all the uh, e email and, and, uh, and web addresses for Gali at the end of this video, which we're just about on, I just want to mention that on the 19th, we have the moon square Jupiter in Mars as well. This is a day that we could be a little bit too impulsive, extravagant, nervous, or horny, God forbid. Emotional. And emotional, right. And just a little bit of precaution and a little bit more tolerance and, and, um, and using your minds can go a long way on the 19th. And on the 20th, Nighttime Central Europe, noontime onwards, Eastern Standard Time, we have the moon conjunct Neptune. This is a time for right brain activities, not so much for left brain. It's in the weekend, so enjoy it. And it's, you know, if you get the Saturday night blues, well, it's actually for you guys in the States and elsewhere in the world, it's a Sunday night blues. So forget about it. It's going to be in your Saturday night if you're in Europe or if you are in the States during the day on Saturday the 20th. So just enjoy nature, enjoy spirituality, and enjoy creativity, and don't do your calculations or your uh, taxes on that time. <laughs> Anything else you want to add, Gali, before I tell people how they can find you? I don't think Saturn in Capricorn will allow you not to do your taxes. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. With that pessimistic but true note, um, <laughs> Um, reality check. Reality, reality check, exactly. I want to say that uh, Gali's site is www.healingstar11.com. That's healingstar11.com. Um, Gali, you want to give out your email or any other site? Or sure. Channel? Um, I mean, my, my website is, um, when you enter, it's uh, everything, almost everything is in Hebrew, but you have... Uh, an English um, button. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can go to the English version of the website. Uh, and my, my, um, my email, you can contact me uh, through the website or through my email, healingstar11 at uh, gmail.com. I also have a yeah. Facebook page, Healing Star Astrology and Kundalini Yoga. So people, I encourage you to uh, connect to Gali both for yoga and astrology. And Gali, I want to thank you again for participating with me this week. Thank you very much, Boaz, for having it's me. It's been a pleasure having you. And I hope to have you again <laughs> on my show. I'll be and happy. Great. So everybody, have a beautiful week. I want to thank you for listening, of course, for private consultations and lessons, both with Gali and myself. And for any question you might have regarding astrology, We'd be very happy if you contact us. And remember that every like, every comment, and every share helps this video uh, get promoted as we don't have the money to pay Mark Zuckerberg to uh, do it for us. So have a beautiful week and thank you everybody. Take care and bye-bye. Bye-bye.